Hello and good evening. Welcome to New Milton Baptist Church on this second Sunday of Advent as we count each week to Christmas. And so I light the first two, two candles. Only two more weeks to go. We gather to worship God. So here's some words of Jesus from John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and he does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man who runs away because he's a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Wonderful words from Jesus, the one who would be the shepherd of all. Let's pray. Father God, as we gather this evening to worship you, so Father, we recall those wonderful words that Jesus said that he is the good shepherd, the one who cares for, the one who leads and blesses and feeds and keeps all who come to him. And Father, we thank you. We thank you. And on this Sunday of Advent, as we look forward to Christmas, when we celebrate Jesus' first coming. So Father, we ask that tonight we might perceive you. That we might recognise that as we gather in the name of Jesus, so there he is in our midst. And although we might be in different places, we're together in spirit. So we know that Jesus is here to receive our worship, to speak into our lives and to bless. So Father, we thank you. We thank you and we ask that you would receive our worship tonight. The worship of those who have accepted Jesus as our own Good Shepherd. But Father, we recognise that we are a fragile people, in many ways a sinful people, for we still bear our flesh and we've thought, said and done things that are offensive to you who are perfect. So Father, as we come, we confess our sins, Confessing them because we know that we can't hide them. But as we confess, so you forgive. So Father, we thank you because the blood of Jesus, your Son, purifies us from all sin. Pour your Spirit out upon us, we pray, that our worship might be real, that it might truly be in spirit and in truth. And we ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now in the evenings, we're looking at some of the prophecies connected with Jesus that appear in the prophet Isaiah. And tonight, the passage that I'm taking is Isaiah 40, verses one through to 11. And you might like to keep your Bibles open at this page, because I'll be referring to it as I speak. So Isaiah 40 and reading from verse one. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for, that she's received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. 
a voice calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain, and the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all the people will see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All the people are like grass, and all their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall, because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of our God endures forever. You who bring good news to Zion, go up on a high mountain, you who bring good news to Jerusalem. Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. And may God bless his word to us tonight. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your word, your word that speaks words of comfort. We ask that by your spirit you would speak them into our lives tonight, that we too might be drawn to you and receive the comfort and the challenge that they bring. Father, we thank you. In the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Well, for many people in the, 20, in the 21st century, God, if he exists at all, is a distant, even uncaring being, not involved in the affairs of this world. So uncaring that he allows diseases like the coronavirus to rampage through the world. He's seen as being either impotent or uncaring. Even some religions like, like Islam see him as being so transcendent, so above us, that is beyond our knowing him personally. While they could not be more wrong. The God revealed to us in the Bible not only created all things, but he's close to each and every one of us. God has not abandoned us. He is near and he desires to be intimately involved in the lives of each and every one of us. And this is the central message of the Bible and of this passage in particular. Comfort Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for. The God revealed to us in the Bible is holy. His justice is perfect. His law of love is absolute. In the book of Isaiah, God speaks to the prophet, proclaiming the righteousness of God and calling his people to account. Yes, all have sinned. All have sinned and will give account to God. The people of Israel and Judah were going to have to bear the consequences of their sin and unfaithfulness. But after words of judgment come these wonderful words of comfort. Comfort, comfort my people, says the Lord your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her hard service has been completed, that her sin has been paid for. These are not the words of a distant, uncaring deity. 
These are the words of the God who is love. The words of the God who will not abandon humanity. The God who comes into the lives and situations of any who will draw near to him. The message of the Old Testament is the promise that God will come to his people. And this is the central theme of Advent, that God would come and in a way that would blow the minds of all. God would come to his people, not with wrath and judgment. We can have that if we want it, but he comes to draw alongside us, to bring good news, the offer of forgiveness, the offer of life. Here is your God, a holy and a consuming fire. But for 33 years, God would come closer than any could imagine. For God would take on human flesh and experience life as we do. This lovely passage of Isaiah is one of the many prophecies that concern the coming of Jesus. God coming to his people, not to judge, but to save. Verse 9. Lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up, do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, Here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power, and he rules with a mighty arm. See, his reward is with him, and his recompense accompanies him. God was coming to his people. And this would be fulfilled some five to six hundred years after Isaiah was writing. God would come to his people. He would be made incarnate, made human in the person of Jesus. Fully God and fully man. God was coming to his people. Born in poverty and obscurity. Laid in a manger an animal's feeding trough. Probably not even in a stable. There was no room at the inn. And in fact, no stable is mentioned in the Gospels. And this is how God came to his people. Here is your God. Sharing human suffering. But God had come. Isaiah and the other prophets predicted the coming of Jesus. But to be sure that the people heard, before the king arrived, before Jesus began his ministry, God sent his messenger, a herald to prepare the way. And in verse 3, we have the promise of John the Baptist, the herald, the messenger, announcing the imminent arrival of the king, God coming to his people. Verse 3. He would be a voice of one calling in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be raised up, every mountain and hill made low. The rough ground shall become level, the rugged places a plain. And the glory of the Lord will be revealed. God was coming to his people becoming human, one of us. He would be born in obscurity, but the herald would announce his arrival and call the people to be ready. This passage is quoted by Mark at the beginning of his gospel. When Mark writes in chapter one, a voice of one calling in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord, make straight paths for him, and so John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sin, announcing the coming of Jesus, the imminent arrival of God to his people. For John said, After me comes one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, 
but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John, the herald, came calling the people to get ready because God was coming to his people. And we're told in, Mark, in, in, in Mark's Gospel that the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by John in the Jordan. God is holy. He must judge sin. He cannot, by nature, tolerate sin, anything that's less than perfect. God was coming. So John was sent to call the people to repent, to change their ways, to make a change, to reorientate their lives towards God, to get ready. And if we would likewise have God draw near to us, we likewise must repent, lay aside all that is wrong in our lives and reorientate our lives, our very beings, towards God to be ready to receive him, to be ready to truly acknowledge him as king. God knows what we are. He knows the depths of our hearts. He loves us. He knows the truth about us, our fragility. As Isaiah wrote in verse six, all people are like grass and their faithfulness is like the flowers of the field. The grass withers and the flowers fall because the breath of the Lord blows on them. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Almighty God, in all his power, majesty and holiness, recognises our human fickleness and fragility, our mortality, and he calls to us. The word of the Lord endures forever. And that same call comes down the centuries to us today. In love, God would draw near. In love, he would save. So we, like the people of long ago, are called to change our minds, to reorientate our lives and receive him as king. Isaiah prophesied it. John the Baptist heralded his coming. And Jesus is revealed to us in the Gospels. Just as he came to humanity all those years ago. He came to us in history and he would, cut, he would draw near to us all now. Here is your God. See, the Sovereign Lord comes with power and he rules with a mighty arm. Not even a world pandemic can separate us from his love. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. Verse 11. He tends his flock like a shepherd he gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those who have young. Here is your God. There are those who say that the God of the Old Testament is cold, holy, hard and wrathful. But that's a lie. A lie that comes straight from the sulphurous lips of Satan. God is love and here in Isaiah he speaks tender words of comfort to all who will listen. As Isaiah prophesied, so God was coming to his people, not as a warrior or a judge, but as a shepherd. And this is what we see in Jesus. In our first reading in John 10, Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I am God made flesh. I am the good shepherd, the one prophesied by Isaiah. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And in love, Jesus would do just that. At our need, 
he lay down his life. After three and thirty years, his life and ministry were crowned by the cross. He lay down his life for our sin. Jesus gave himself as the sacrifice to wash our sins away. That same sin that is abhorrent to God was born by God, by Jesus on the cross. And he did that so that we may draw near to him. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. Jesus, the Good Shepherd, lay down his life so that we may know him. He lay down his life for you and for me to deal with the sin that separates us from God. <clears throat> that we may draw near to him and know him as our shepherd. God wants to know you personally and you know him. Here is your God. In this time of pandemic and uncertainty, God has not abandoned us. Our God would come to us. He would draw near to you tonight. This is the message of Advent, the message of the Old Testament, a message of comfort and tenderness. For God is not distant. He's closer than you think. He desires to draw near to you and to me, to shepherd us through life, to tend his flock, to carry us close to his heart. This is your God. Holy and perfect, almighty and righteous, but loving and merciful, and whatever our experience may be tonight, he would draw close to you and to me. He is our good shepherd. He has paid for our sins himself and would speak words of comfort and tenderness into our lives tonight. If only we will draw near and acknowledge him. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you for the prophets of old, for those words written by Isaiah at your behest. And after speaking words of, comf of challenge and righteousness, so here you bring us words of comfort and tenderness, words that promise us the coming of Jesus. God, Come to us, God with us, God who would be our shepherd and carry us close to his heart. Father, we thank you. We thank you that in this passage we get a glimpse of your great love for each and every one of us. Father, grant that we might recognise it. Grant that we might receive it grant that we might live in the light of it, accepting you as shepherd and Lord of our lives. And Father, we ask this in the precious name of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. Amen. Now I'm going to read to you an Advent hymn, maybe even a, a, a pre-Christmas carol. I cannot tell why he whom angels worship should set his love upon the sons of men, or why as shepherd he should seek the wanderers to bring them back, they know not how nor when. But this I know, that he was born of Mary, when Bethlehem's manger was his only home, and that he lived at Nazareth and laboured, and so the Saviour 
Saviour of the world, is come. I cannot tell how silently he suffered, as with his peace he graced this place of tears, or how his heart upon the cross was broken, the crown of pain to three and thirty years. But this I know, he heals the broken hearted, and stays our sin, and calms our lurking fear, and lifts the burden from the heavy laden, for yet the Saviour, Saviour of the world, is here. I cannot tell how he will win the nations, how he will claim his earthly heritage, how satisfy the needs and aspirations of East and West, of sinner and of sage. But this I know, all flesh will see his glory, and he shall reap the harvest he has sown, and some glad day his sun shall shine in splendour, when he, the Saviour, Saviour of the world, is known. I cannot tell how all the lands will worship, when at his bidding every storm is stilled, or who can say how great the jubilation when all the hearts of men with love are filled. But this I know, the skies will thrill with rapture, and myriad, myriad human voices sing, and earth to heaven, and heaven to earth will answer, at last the Saviour, Saviour of the world, is King. Let's bring our prayers for, for others to God. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you for those words of comfort, comfort spoken so long ago, for words that come to us down the years and are fresh and relevant to us today. And so, Father, as the dark nights have come, as winter gallops towards us and Christmas is approaching. So we pray for those, those who are lonely, those who are cut off because of the COVID virus, because of, of the social distancing rules. Father, we pray for those who, feel, who are feeling lonely, for those who are struggling with their mental health. Father, we ask that you would draw especially close to them, that they might know your presence and the reality of God with us. Father, we pray for your people, that we might see where there are people, where there are people struggling, that we might pick up the phone and ring and speak to them and speak words of comfort into their lives today. Father, we pray for those who have been bereaved, whether because of the coronavirus or for any other way. Father, we pray for those who have lost a loved one and those who, as Christmas approaches, feel it so much more keenly. Father, we ask that you would draw close to them that you would bring comfort and peace to them right now. And Father, again, we pray for your people, that we might recognise where people are mourning, where their hearts are filled with grief, that we too might pick up the phone and speak words of comfort and friendship into their lives they might know that they're not alone. Father, we pray for those who, as the weather is becoming cold, are homeless. For those who don't know where they're going to sleep tonight. For those who are rough sleepers. Father, we pray for the charities that seek to serve them, that provide night shelters, that provide a warm bed and warm food and clean clothes. Father, we pray that those charities might 
find those who are cold tonight, that none would slip through the net. And Father, we pray for your people, that we might recognise this and that our wallets and purses might be open to give, to support and help these charities and these people, those who are struggling and suffering because of homelessness. Father, we pray for those who are sick, for those who have received bad news, bad news of, a, of a difficult diagnosis, whether it be COVID or cancer or any other debilitating and life-limiting disease. Father, we pray that you would draw close to them, that they might know your presence, they might know your healing, either by your hand direct or via the ministrations of the doctors and nurses. We pray for healing. We pray for salvation. And for all those who tonight are going to leave this earth, we pray that none would leave, none that would enter your presence without having at least heard about Jesus and given the chance to respond and be saved. For we know that it is not your desire that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And so again we pray for your church, for your people, that we might bring words of love and comfort, that we might, might do acts of kindness that point to you, who might dare to open our mouths and tell them about the Saviour who loves them and would shepherd them even through death. And finally, Father, we bring to you our own needs and those people that are on our hearts, knowing that you've heard us. Father, we lift them up to you, knowing that you love them more deeply even than we do. We commit them to you, asking that you heal, restore, save and guide. And so Father, we bring to you all our prayers, the spoken and the unspoken, knowing that you've heard us because we pray in the name of Jesus. So Father, we thank you and we praise you, for we know that you're answering even now. Amen and Amen. Let's draw our time together to a close as we say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And here the words of the blessing. The dying Saviour's love, the risen Saviour's power, the ascended Saviour's blessing, and the returning Saviour's glory be the joy and the comfort of your hearts now and forever. Amen. And God bless you.